Alright guys, so today we're going to do a little tutorial to make a Pymol movie using G protein G alpha and we'll do some fun uh, visualizations with this and show you how to make a pretty cool little movie. So first thing we need to do is bring up our structures. And so we can type into Pymol fetch one CIP, that's our GTP bound form of G alpha. And it looks kind of like this in sticks form and it doesn't look all that pretty. So what we can do is go over here to show, go to show as cartoon and cartoon is going to make it look a lot nicer so we got this nice I don't know, tan colored alpha helices and beta sheets and coils that we can see here now we also want to bring up our other form of the protein because we're going to do all what's called a morph between them so we can see how the protein moves as it does its job so we're going to also fetch one bof and that's the gdp bound form and we'll also show that as cartoon so now you got both of these guys, but we won't need to align them. And so first thing you want to do is kind of bring up your sequence viewer. That's down here in the corner, the S. And let's just look at our sequences. Since they're the same protein, they should look really similar. But what we're looking for is something down here, the magnesium, which is the actual catalytic piece of our protein. So we want to make sure those line up. So what we can do here is click on the sulfate that's in the wrong place with the alignment. And we'll just right click it and we'll be sure we remove that. So now our magnesiums line up. And now we can just type in align one BOF comma one CIP and that'll put them in the same place. But now I can't see them. So I can go over here to action and go to orient on any either one of them and that will bring it up in the middle here for me. Okay, so now what I can do is do my morph. And I usually like to start at the GDP bound form because it's the inactive form. And that way we can show the mechanism of activation by switching it to the GTP bound form. So I'm going to go to my GDP bound form, 1BOF, go to action, generate, morph, to molecule 1CIP. And this thing is going to go through some calculations that kind of show and come up with a hybrid that shows essentially the trajectories of different molecules or side chains in this protein that connect between the GDP and the GDP bound form. And right now it's just doing its calculations. So you're just going to have to wait. But you can see some pretty decent sized movements in this thing. The two, the two lobes are moving towards each other. Some of the loops are moving in. This helix is elongating. And some of these loops are moving in the active site. And a lot of this movement is crucial for the activi activity of GTP G alpha. Okay, so now it's done. We have what's called a morph here. And we can just make sure that's what we're selected. And you can see the magnesium that we aligned earlier is over here, and it's structured. Now what we'd like to do is show some of these as objects. And we want to have them independent so that we can have them move around. Um, so we can select this magnesium, and we can create an object. So I right-clicked on it, do actions, copy to object, and there it is. We have now have a magnesium object that we can show as spheres. There's our little magnesium in the active site. Now I like to color that white. Maybe I want to color my morph uh, blue. Who knows? Nah, not blue. Let's do green. That looks good. So now we have magnesium shown in our structure and we have our protein structure shown. Now we also want to show our GTP and GDP. So I'm going to create an object manually here. So I'm going to type create GTP. I'm going to type in residue name GNP. And the reason I'm doing that is if you look at the GTP bound form 1CIP, we look down at the end, GNP is what they use for GTP mimics. So we want to cr create that. I'm going to turn that off and I'm going to create a GTP out of residue name GNP. And that zooms me in. Now GTP is a organic molecule, and I'm going to show that as sticks. And there's our nice GTP in our active site. And I'm going to orient back out on the morph so I can zoom out. That's my GTP bound in the active site. Now I also want to do the same thing with GDP. I'm going to create GDP from residue name GDP. Same. And we can again look in our BOF, and we can see that GDP is actually our little molecule. I'll turn that off. GDP, 
And there we go in the active site. We have a new object on the right called GDP. And I'm going to show that as sticks as well. Now this is looking, you can see there's a little bit of change between the two positions. That's okay. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to zoom back out. Orient on a morph. And I don't need both of these. I'm starting out in the GDP bound form, so I'll turn off GTP. So there's our nice little enzyme. Now another thing we want to look at is the catalytic residues inside of G alpha. And one of those guys is the arginine at 178. So I can look at my sequence up here. You go to 178. You can see 176 is this arginine here. 178 is this one. So that just became my selection. So over here I have a new selection highlighted. And I'm going to show that selection. I'm going to show it sticks. And that will overlay it with my cartoon. So there's my little arginine. Okay. So I'll color that by element so you can see the side chain. I'll do this one. Looks pretty good. There's my arginine. Sounds good. So you can see that little arginine there. Now, because we did a morph earlier, what we can do right now is just play, and you can see the motions of the enzyme. It's just going to go back and forth. Just go jump back to one. Of course, we are starting in GDP bound form, and that means that our, G, our arginine is pointing in. You can see that the head of it is here. If I go to 30 by hitting this little end button, the arginine tilts away. Okay, So I'm going to go back to state 1 here. You can see our little active site. So that's our G-alpha. That's our morph G-alpha, uh, and it is ready for some movie making. Okay? We have everything that we need here. So now we want to start making some scenes. Now, PyMall comes with a little white window. If you're on Mac, that's already built in, but on PC, there's a little white window. This is what we're going to need to do some of our movie making. So first thing we want to do is let's make a scene with looking at the whole protein. So I've got it where I want it. Resize this window a little bit. Got it where I want it. And I'm going to create a new scene. Scenes are just essentially a zoom setting. So I'm going to go to Scene, Store, Store it in F1, and that's just a placeholder. I'm going to rename that by right clicking. Go to Rename, and I'm going to call this GDP Bound Protein. Okay. Now it's also, you might want to zoom in on the active site because it's the, where the business happens. And now I got my GDP active site. Let me get the sequence reviewer out. I might want to orient on my GDP. That looks pretty good. A little scroll of the mouse wheel to change my vocal plane. Looks pretty good. Now I'm going to store that as a scene too, because I want to zoom in on the active site so you can see what's going on. Maybe I like it better from that angle. See, the, the phosphates are coordinated to that magnesium, and the arginine is also. So let's do that. Let's set it, save this as a scene to store F1, and I'm going to rename that GDP Active Site. GDP Active Site. Okay. Well, I might want to zoom back out after I've looked at that so I can watch the motions that I want to program in. So I'm just going to orient back on the whole protein. Uh, put that kind of like this. I don't know, whatever. It will, PyMall will interpolate any kind of connection between these scenes when we program the movie. So I'll just store this guy as a scene. It doesn't really matter how you do it. You just want to zoom back out. And we'll call that one GDP Protein 2. All right. All right. Now I might want to switch to the GTP bound form. So I'm going to turn on GTP by clicking it and turn off GDP. And now I would like to make sure that all of my residues are in the state 30. So I'm going to click down here on this little guy to move us to the end state. And I'm going to save the scene there. Store scene. Rename it GTP protein. GTP bound protein. And that looks pretty good. I like how that's looking. And we want to zoom in on the active site again. So I'm going to zoom in, orient to my GTP, and I'll make sure my focal window is changed by scrolling the mouse wheel or trackpad, however you like. And you can see this arginine is tipped out when you have it in state 30. So I'm going to store that as my scene. And that scene is going to be 
GTP active site. And now I want to zoom back out so we can look at the whole protein at the end. So we're doing a lot of zooming here, but they'll store that scene too. And I'll just rename that guy. Let's see, uh, GTP bound protein. So now I have all the scenes I want to do. So if I click on them, I'll, it'll switch me between the scenes. So first it's going to look at the GDP bound protein. You can see GDP is turned on. Then my GDP active site, I can zoom in on that. So my movie is going to zoom in like that. Then it's going to zoom back out. Like that. Then we're going to switch to the GTP bound form. So you can see the change in structure. And we're going to switch to the GTP active site. Zoom back in on the active site. And we're going to zoom back out to look at the whole protein again. Yeah. Okay, so we are going to start programming in some of our movie stuff. And in our movie stuff, we want to have a little spin. We want to look at this protein kind of in uh, all around it. So we're going to go to back to our first scene, and we're going to program in a movie by going to Movie, Program, Camera Loop, and this moves the camera all around, and we're going to go to Y Roll. You can see that. I'm sorry, but y, four second Y Roll. Now we play our movie, what we're going to see is a spin around the y-axis here. And I'll stop and go back to the beginning. All right, so now what we want to do is add some time so we can start changing our scenes. So I'm going to just jump to the end, this little one with the arrow on it. it comes to the last frame, you can see we're at frame 120 out of 120. And now I'm going to go to movie and I'm going to add some seconds. I'm going to append four seconds onto this. And this is going to give us more time. And so if we play this movie, what's going to do is... Go all the way back to the beginning, spin around, and then it doesn't know what to do anymore. It's just going to hold. So what I want to do now is I'll let it go a little ways. And the longer you put this, the more spaced apart the frames go. I'm going to start zooming into our second part. I'm going to zoom into our active site at this point in time. And so if I want to do that, I'm just going to move it to where I want to go. I'm going to right-click and do Store with Scene, GDP Active Site. Okay. So if I go back and play this film, it's going to spin around. And it's going to zoom into the active site, but now it's going to start to try to start looping back to where it started. Now I can prevent that by giving us a little bit of a hold. I have to copy this keyframe here that is power zoomed into the active site. To copy a frame, you just hold down shift and right click and drag it out to where you want to go. So now what happens is if we zoom in, I'll play it from here. It zooms in and it's going to hold and then it's going to start trying to loop again. Cool. Now I'd like to zoom back out. So I'm going to move it out of here and I'm going to add a new scene. So I see in GDP Protein 2. And if I play it, it's going to zoom out back out to where we wanted it for the third scene. And I'm going to copy that keyframe out of there. Okay, so it's going to zoom back out. I'll play the whole thing for you again. Spin around the y-axis for four seconds. A zoom into the active site and a hold. And then zoom back out. And then it starts to try to loop again. Now, what I want to do is after it's shown me the GDP bound form, I'm going to make it uh, do the morph. Okay, now we have to do some manual commands to make it morph. And so I'm going to go to right where I'm, my GDP protein 2 is. And I'm going to do M add, which is a movie add, 1 through 30. That's going to tell it to go 1 through 30. Uh, our states, so it's going to do the morph. And then I'm going to have, have it hold 30 for 600 seconds. That's uh, 20 seconds total of frames at 30 frames per second. It's 20 seconds. Okay. Now you can see our movie has gotten a lot longer. But if we play our movie, it's going to do our spin. Then it's going to zoom in. It's going to hold, zoom back out. And then you'll start seeing the morph happen. See the morph? And it's going to hold there. It's going to hold there the rest of the movie. It's going to be nice. Okay? So this is where our morph ends. And you can see it over here right when it says state 30. I'm going to back it up exactly to where it says state 30. It starts to change. Okay? There's our starts to change. 30. That's the last part of our morph. And that's where I'm going to store our GTP bound protein scene. And I'm going to copy that again so we get a hold. So it's going to, again, kind of zoom, do the morph, and it's going to switch the ligand for us, too. And it's going to hold. And part two will continue.